eagerly jumped into JRPGs in December, immediately buying two JRPG-related bundles that meant I had six games to play, and I did my very best to try and finish them by the end of the month. Despite playing them using any free time I could get, I didn't get through all of them, but I didn't do too badly since I made the credits roll in three Persona Dance games and finished two Atelier ones in a back-to-back -back gaming effort that got those five games done just in time for the last day of the year. I'm not complaining at all as it was a lot of fun, and I got to rediscover some of my favorite rhythm games while diving deeper into a series I wanted to get to know, along with somehow fitting in a few extra experiences thanks to all the Persona news during the month getting me excited to play some of its many games. So with a month jam-packed full of JRPGs and related games, these are the JRPGs I played in December. Usually JRPG of the month is where I highlight one lone JRPG I particularly loved from the month, but it's hard to pick just one as the Atelier Arlen DX collection as a whole is what brought me the most JRPG fun in December. I only got to the first two games last month and have started the third in January, but my time with its first two games Atelier Verona and Atelier Totori was quite enjoyable and also an educational experience for playing Atelier going forward. While enjoying the synthesis and gathering mechanics I'd enjoyed in Linian Soul, but this time in Arlen, I quickly learned that these aren't games you can rush through after getting the bad ending in my first playthrough of Atelier Rorona, and what was an important lesson that taught me about the time, thought, and effort you should put into these games if you want to be rewarded with better endings. Through this lesson, my enjoyment of the whole trilogy has been much higher, and I feel like I understand what Atelier is much more now as a game of unlocking events, getting to know its characters day by day, while progressing the main story more gradually, and my lesson in Atelier Rorona greatly contributed to my enjoyment of the more story-filled Atelier Totori, especially since I got a better ending in that in my first run. While the Arlen Trilogy's time limits can be a little stressful at times, the challenge of trying to get the timing right within the gameplay loop of starting quests, then gathering and fighting enemies to get items to fulfill them makes time management feel like an active part of gameplay, and it was an enjoyable strategic experience as I decided what to do in a way that we use out the least amount of time. I had hoped to be done with the collection before the end of last year, but I don't mind too much as the loop really is a lot of fun, along with the great story events that are unlocked through doing it. And as I continue playing into January and work on reviews for each game as well, I can happily say my experience with the Arlen Trilogy has really solidified my love of the Atelier series, and I'm looking forward to more Atelier when Atelier Lulua comes out this year. While I've played and platinumed all the Persona Dance titles in Japanese, the Endless Night Collection was released in early December and was a way for me to finally play them all in English. I love the rhythm game portion of these games, but since there isn't really any difference between the English and Japanese versions of that, while I still had fun with it and made sure to unlock all the songs, my main focus was the story parts of each, particularly the story from Persona 4 Dancing All Night as it has the biggest one. All the story events in the three are pretty enjoyable, with the Persona 3 and five dance ones letting you get to know small details about each of the characters in short events, where Persona 4 Dancing All Night instead has its own story mode. While the lighthearted moments in 3 and 5 were enjoyable, my favorite story of the three ended up being Persona 4 Dancing All Night, thanks to how much I liked seeing the amusing cast interact with each other in an interesting side mystery that still carried Persona 4's tone, and I especially like how they fleshed out characters like Inoue and Kanami, who had very minor roles in Persona 4, with Kanami being my new favorite character in the dance games. I haven't had the time to platinum these games in English yet, but I usually keep rhythm games in my library for when I get that rhythm game itch, so hopefully in my downtime I get enough time to platinum them at some point. In any case, they were enjoyable again a second time round, and since I've been a little bad in the past with getting to know Persona spin-off games in full, I was glad I was finally able to have an excuse to get to know these stories properly, and I recommend the bundle to anyone who wants to do the same in a more cost-effective way. While my Dragalia Lost addiction did start to wane just a little as I had so much to play on consoles in December, I did have to try the Christmas event to help get into the holiday spirit. As usual, I probably spent way too much time playing the limited time-only quest to get currency to get the festive units, but I was also happy to see the Christmas story was pretty well done as well, and made me 
like his characters even more as they all tried to be giving during the Dragon Yule season in the game. With Christmassy takes on the characters, music, and everything that makes Dragalia Lost great, I had a really good time with it when I played it on the go. And while I feel more into console gaming right now and don't have any specific plans for the next time I'll play it, I know Dragalia Lost has plenty of character stories and new quests to entertain me the next time I get to it. One time last month when I was doing a bunch of file transfers on my computer while working on a video, I found a sneaky half hour to fit in some Persona 2, which I could only do so much in, but was nonetheless happy I could put some time into. I got one or two floors further into the current dungeon I'm in, discovered some traps that could potentially throw me back down to the previous floor, and refresh my memory on the battle system, so hopefully that prepares me if I get more time with it this month. Some of you may have noticed that I completely missed my goal of finishing it last year, so this is amusingly my second year of playing it and trying to finish it, which is way too long to complete one game, but is kind of what happens when you try and keep up with new stuff. While I would like to get further into my backlog at some point this year, I'm still happy in my slow journey with the game, so hopefully 2019 allows me a little more time to see it through to the end. During another small block of time, I managed to play a little Persona OA to take a peek at the Q2 content that had been added in to celebrate the Japanese release. While there wasn't that much Q2 content aside from wallpapers and different Q2 characters showing up on the home screen, I was impressed to see some of the things that have been added since the last time I played OA. More events from side characters in Persona 5 such as Takami and Kawakami have been added, and there was a special Kamashita themed dungeon on at the time that rewarded me with related items items, along with the first featured summon event I've seen that I used a lot of my Persona points on. I'm still a little bummed that OA hasn't seen an English release, as I think a lot of people would enjoy the story content, but I'm also not sure how big of a game it is in Japan, as I don't hear people talk about it much at all these days. In any case, it was nice to jump in, even for a little bit to see how it's going, and I'll be keeping an eye out to see if it gets more support as Persona announcements happen throughout the year. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is of course not a JRPG, but with characters like Pikachu, a bunch of Fire Emblem ones, and the fact that Joker from Persona 5 was announced as DLC, it became a sporadic I need this right now purchase last month that involved me going to my local game store and buying it pretty much immediately. I'm actually pretty excited to have Ultimate as it's the first Smash game I've owned since I only played it at friends' houses as a kid, so I'm enjoying learning how to play on occasion while I try to unlock characters, even though I've still got a long way to go. I was hoping the Persona 5 content would be out closer to the announcement since it's what prompted me to get it, but according to interviews with the director Sakurai, it might be a little while. But if the interactive stages in the game so far are anything to go off, I think the wait will be well worth it, and I can't wait to see what they'll do with the cool designs from Persona 5 in the setting and to play as Joker, as I'm sure it'll end up being something cool. Until then, it'll be a fun game to keep unlocking things in and to play with others in my free time, and with a bunch of characters as I know, and it's fun platforming, I'm happy I added it to my collection. My quest with Atelier Arlen is still going as I've still got to finish Atelier Maruru, so my main plans for January revolve around that, along with the long-awaited Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm currently having so much fun with Atelier that I kind of don't want Maruru to end so far, but I'm already 20 hours in this month and completely addicted to the gameplay loop, especially with so many characters returning from Totori and Rorona that keep events very fulfilling. I'm really enjoying seeing how they've grown in this third game of the trilogy, and it gets me really excited for Atelier Lelua as well. I was initially hoping to play Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition, but I have a feeling I won't quite be done with Atelier Maruru in time, so it may unfortunately become another Tales game I will have neglected, but it is one I'd still like to try at some point this year. Aside from Atelier, there's also a little piece of me that wants to keep this month as free as possible for Kingdom Hearts 3, as I'm pretty damn excited for it, as I'm sure a lot of other people are. The final battle trailer really did its job of getting me hyped for the release, and I'll after so many delays, it'll be kind of surreal to see it out and available finally this month. I'm crossing my fingers that the earlier releasing Japanese version will include the English voiceover as a lot of Square Enix games have done recently, but in any case, I'll be picking it up as soon as it's out in a form I understand, and I can't wait to play this big title in what I'm sure will be another fun month of playing JRPGs. 
Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below what you played in December and what you're playing in January. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here or you can check out the blog at jrpgjungle.com and you can find me on social media on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram all at jrpgjungle. Links to those will be in the description below along with links to everything I mentioned in this video. Until next time, thank you, bye!